This gentleman sustained this fracture playing rugby. The lateral thumb radiograph suggests it may be extraarticular, but the PA view shows it's actually a Bennett's fracture with a very large volar beak fragment. Due to concerns about comminution, a CT scan was done, which shows the extent of the gap and step in the articular surface, plus a small die punch fragment. Bennett's fractures are usually inherently unstable because of the distracting force of the APL tendon. For this, and to improve the articular contour, surgery was recommended. The operative strategy was to attempt closed reduction of the fracture with longitudinal traction, followed by KY stabilization. If closed reduction was not possible, open reduction and internal fixation with plate and screws, via Wagner approach, would be performed. Fortunately, and in spite of the die punch fragment, closed reduction was effective. Under general anesthetic and standard prep and drape, local anesthetic block was administered first. The first CMC joint receives innervation from almost all of the nerves entering the hand, including the deep branch of ulnar nerve. Its biggest contributor is from the superficial branch of radial nerve, so particular attention is paid to block this. Next an intraarticular injection of the CMC joint is performed by palpating the, the joint while moving the metacarpal. A pop is usually felt as the needle enters the joint, and the anesthetic is delivered without resistance. Aspirate before injecting. In this case blood from a hemarthrosis from the fracture site flashes back into the syringe. A 1.6 mm K wire is inserted through the skin at the glabrous border of the thumb metacarpal, just proximal to its midpoint. This entry point is selected so as to minimize injury to extensor tendons and sensory nerve branches, and to contact the bone near the base of the metacarpal where it flares outwards. The assistant applies longitudinal traction to maintain the reduction of the fracture, while the surgeon drives the K-wire across the CMC joint. I prefer to use my other hand to palpate the CMC joint to check its reduction while driving the wire in, which also helps in visualizing the location of the trapezium while it isn't being x-rayed. If using a double point K-wire, the wire can be cut and buried after satisfactory placement, and the other end used as a second wire. I do not use a transverse wire, and more often than not I only use a single oblique wire. In this case I use two oblique wires because the first wire captured the beak fragment and an additional wire was needed to stabilize the joint. Check X-rays confirmed satisfactory wire placement and joint congruity. An axial load is applied to the thumb to check for stability before dressing with jello net, gauze, wool and a thumb spiker plaster. Wires are removed under local anesthetic in the clinic at 4 to 6 weeks post-op. Hand therapy is commenced at 2 weeks for IP joint range of motion. Loading of the thumb is avoided until 6 weeks post-op. These radiographs highlight the importance of checking multiple views, and saving the worst view. In the third view, the first wire is seen emerging from the beak fragment inside the CMC joint. This was accepted because the joint is stabilized by the second wire. The second wire passes through the trapezium into the trapezoid. This was accepted because the trapezo-trapezoid joint is relatively immobile, and backing the wire out could have caused it to loosen later on.